Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the programs related to compilers. So basically, whenever we are studying about compilers and all those things, we'll be, we'll be hearing multiple words like interpreter, assembler, and all those things, right? So in this lecture, we'll be clearing some of those words, guys, so that in further, you will not be having any kind of confusions with these kind of things, okay? Okay. So first, let us start with interpreter, guys. Okay? Okay. So basically, the work which is done by the compiler and the interpreter is almost the same guys in simple words you can say it is exactly the same but how they do is deferred guys deferred guys yes okay so basically interpreter it is an another program like compiler that executes instructions written in a program line by line so this is a really important thing that you should remember guys so it does the same thing but here it will be doing line by line guys so one after the other line and here there will be no intermediate code generation so basically once we are going through the compiler phases you will be understanding but when you are using compiler you will be having the intermediate code also okay okay so the simple diagram block diagram will be in this way so interpreter the source code and the input you'll be getting the output okay okay so the one more thing is that directly you can execute guys with the help of interpreter there is no process of compilation you can say directly once you give the code on once you pass it through the interpreter it gives you the output in that way so directly it can be executed okay okay so now let us discuss the differences between the compiler and the interpreter guys okay so the compiler compiler checks the entire higher level program at once so basically compiler will take the whole program and it will be start compiling guys whereas the interpreter it translates a statement by statements like a line by line you can say okay so the best example for interpreter is you can say python guys the python you can run the code with the help of interpreter guys directly okay yes so basically in when you are using visual studio or anything once you press press the shift enter it automatically executes that particular line guys okay okay so in that way okay similarly compiler so if the program is error free it compiles the program into object code and can be executed okay similarly if a program is error free it executes the program and continues till the last statement. So basically interpreter will be saying like one after the other. So assume that there are few statements guys. So first statement it will execute, it will show the output, then the next statement, then the next statement. If they are interrelated, they'll be linking them, else it will be an individual statements guys. Okay. Okay. So let us continue. So compiler, the process is called as compilation, is called as interpretation. Okay. So it pro it processes each program statement exactly once so basically if there is a for loop let us take an example of a for loop guys so if there is a particular statement okay so whenever you are using the compiler it will be taking the whole program right so it knows that this is a for loop for it clearly it, it can understand by observing itself right yes whereas for an interpreter once it checks the for loop for starting it will be assuming that okay there is a for loop but when it comes inside to execute the internal statements it will be having no idea that it is in the for loop so once this execution is done again it will be checking the condition and again it will be converting all this into the machine code or the or the target code right so that is a small drawback you can say in the interpreter so it might process some statements repeatedly so these kind of statements like inside loop inside go to and inside all those things those statements will be repeated multiple times guys as it passes line by line as it takes the entire program okay similarly compiler processing takes less time because there is no repetition whereas the processing in interpreter takes long time because there is a chance of repetition okay so compilers are large in size and occupy more memory so basically if there is a like code of thousand lines and it is requesting for multiple variables multiple registers so at a, any moment of time when the program is running we need to have allocate all that space guys only then the program will be running smoothly else that could be an issue right yes Whereas for an interpreter, you'll be executing line by line. So basically one line might not be depending on the other line, on the above line. So there is no need of external memory or additional memory than the minimum requirements. Okay. So basically the best languages which you can say for compilers are nothing but C, C++, Fortran, Pascal, Ada, etc. And these speed is faster guys. Whereas for compilers, subcompilers. And now let us check with interpreters. So the interpreter language languages are LISP, ML, prolog small talk you can even add python guys there okay so it's a speed is a slower okay okay so i hope everyone got a simple clear idea about the interpreter and compiler right so the one thing that you should have a clear 
idea is nothing but the compiler will take the whole program as an input whereas the interpreter will take line by line or some statements line each statement individually guys okay okay so coming to assembler okay so i hope everyone is clear right yes so assembler so assembler from the name only you can say it converts the source code into the assembly level language guys so it converts the source code return okay return in assembly language into machine code is it done by the assembler okay yes so basically you might be having it out that okay so how does the assembly assembly code looks like right so it is nothing but move x comma 2 so here you are moving the value of x into 2 or 2 into x so based on the syntaxes and everything okay okay so i hope everyone got some basic idea right yes okay so basically it converts the assembly language into machine language so source code assembler assembly language and the object code is nothing but the machine code then you'll be getting after passing through the assembler right yes linker so linker from the name only you can say it is going to link something with something right yes so the linker helps you to find the link and merge various object files to create an executable file even it can be like from various different assemblers so based on the calling modules and to find the memory locations where all the modules are stored so basically i think most of you know that so whenever we are including ash include std io.h and all those header files will be including right so whenever we are writing even a small program so basically those are also some kind of files right yes so basically those are also files which are, which contain some code right yes so these codes will be joined with our program guys before execution before the final stage of conversion the process in which this happens is nothing but linkers and loaders guys so these are the two friends you can say which does the process of linking and loading the files guys so basically with your source code they will be adding these header files these external files whichever are required so basically you will be using printf right so where is the definition of it it will be in the stdio.h so basically that file will be linked with our source code so in this way the whole process will be working guys okay okay so the loaders so the loader is a part of the operating system which performs the task of loading executable files into memory and run them it also calculate the size of the program which creates the additional memory spaces okay okay similarly preprocessors okay okay so basically as the name suggests the preprocessors are the program that processes our source code before compilation so basically before compilation we will be adding all those header files i told you right so basically these things are all added guys one after the other so basically your source code the first header file second header file third header file fourth header file the fifth code if you have added like that okay okay so a simple flow will be in this way guys so basically processor in c so the c code the program and if there are any kind of preprocessors you will be adding them if there are no you will be directly moving on to the compilation so if there are any you will be adding them and you will be moving on to the compilation so this is a simple flow and after that you will be doing linking and loading of all those jobs guys okay okay so other term terminology is nothing but editors so basically in simple words you can say that where we write the code is nothing but the editor guys will be calling them as editors okay so comp compilers accept the source code written in the editors okay so produce a standard file such as ascii files okay so the standard files which they give or which we save are nothing but the ascii formatted files guys okay okay so similarly debugger so basically i hope everyone has an idea about debugger right so basically this is used to reduce or to find the bugs in our code guys okay so even whenever anyone is coding there will be some small small bugs like whenever you are writing defining loops or somewhere you will be missing small small things so those kind of bugs and everything can be identified with the help of the debugger guys okay similarly profilers okay so a profile is a form of a dynamic program analysis that measures the space or time complexity of a program mainly used in code optim offer optimization so basically like every one of you are having some kind of accounts right so facebook or anything will be having some profiles so in which you will be having your own details right so in the same way it will be having the profile guys okay okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea okay so now let us go through project management so basically whenever a particular project is taken by a company the company will be dividing that whole project into multiple parts right okay and they will be assigning a project manager so he'll be guiding everyone to do this to do that so those ones are nothing but project managers so basically in the same way even in compilers they will be using this project managers to assign the code guys like which function should call which like that okay okay 
so if you take a small example of how the steps will be executed in reality or in the pro in the normal way like how the language processing will be done so this is the flow guys so basically you will be giving the source code once you give it to the preprocessor it will be combining all the preprocessor codes like hash include history what that code will be attached and it will be giving the .c file okay and this will be passing it to the compiler and we'll be getting the dot s file that is nothing but the assembly code and this assembly code is given to the assembler and it converts into the machine code that is nothing but a dot o code then linking and loading will be done and after linking and loading you'll be getting the executable file so in this way the whole process works guys okay okay so i hope everyone got a clear idea on this so in the next lecture we will be discussing about the differences between the phases of compiler and passes of compiler and similarly phases of assembler and passes of assembler guys okay so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching